Okay, I would like to tell you about the Kalman filter and some of the mathematics uh, behind it. And my presentation of, of this here is uh, based upon uh, this blog post by BZARC uh, on how a Kalman filter works in pictures. If you haven't read it, um, it's a very nice uh, description of of what is actually taking place inside a, a Kalman filter and some of the ideas behind it. I'll try to go through it step by step uh, and, and draw me uh, draw uh, through this uh, explanation. So uh, hang on and, and see where this will take us. The idea with a Kalman filter is to be able to combine um, information um, about a, a system. And that can be from sensor readings. For instance, if you have a, a car, you could have um, a GPS uh, that tracks your position. But you can also have some kind of IMU, uh, inertial measurement unit or an accelerometer, that tells you something about the ac actual acceleration of the vehicle. And these are two different kinds of, of information, and if you want to combine that into a, a model of, of the system or a, a coherent uh, description of, of the system state, then the Kal Kalman filter is one way to, to go for, for this. So, the first thing we need to be aware of is that we can describe the state of, uh, of a system. And in the example here, we will take a a state vector, um, we call that x, which consists of the position of the vehicle we're looking at and the velocity, current velocity of that vehicle. And if we try to draw that out in a diagram, we can have something like uh, this, where we have the velocity along the x-axis and we have the position on the y-axis. And then our state, our current state uh, of the system can be described with a single point here. That is if we know exactly where we are. If there is some kind of uncertainty on the velocity, it will spread out the, the distribution in this direction. And if there is some kind of uncertainty in the position, it will be spread out here. Um, and therefore you normally don't represent the, the state with a single point, but you actually have uh, a kind of distribution around this. And this will be modeled as a, a Gaussian distribution or a multivariate normal uh, distribution, but more on, on that later. That was here is uh, the variance in the position. And, uh, the width down here is the variance in the velocity, like this. Or it's actually the um, standard deviation here, and the variance is then uh, squared. But the mathematics works out best if, if we have things uh, squared, so, so let's keep it there. In this case, there is no correlation between the uncertainty in the position and the uncertainty in the velocity. But sometimes you end up in a, in a state where you have something like this, again with velocity here and, and position up here, where this is not, the, um, the ellipse is not aligned with the axis. Well, I have ended up rotating it <laughs> completely here, but it's uh, rotated somewhere here. Then we can describe it by both the uh, point here, um, so that will be our xk, which consists of our position and velocity. Put in um, in a vector, and we also have the the covariance matrix uh, given here which is uh, determined by the covariance between the position with the position itself, which will be the, 
variance in, in that value. And similar with uh, the combination of P and V and V and P and finally V and V. So, um, yeah, so this was our state vector. And this is our state covariance matrix. Okay. And if we at some point need to describe the state of our system, then it is described by these uh, numbers. Remark that uh, this description can be generalized to a system more than uh, two um, two elements in, in the state vector. Um, so if it's uh, a free uh, element long state vector, we should be have a free by free uh, covariance matrix related to it here. So this is how to uh, describe the current state. The, the next thing we need to, to be able to do is to predict the next state given the, the current state. And um, in, in our case, where we have the, uh, where we want to, um, to describe the, the next state here, given the uh, current state, we will call that xk minus one. So this is our current state. And we have the next state up here. Then if we know that we have a motion, a linear motion where you have the position and, and the velocity, the matrix that takes the current state until the next state will be given by this. We have, we keep the position and then we add our time interval multiplied with the velocity. That will give us the change in position that we add to the position. And the velocity is uh, kept uh, constant, so therefore there's one. In general terms, uh, we will call this uh, matrix for fk. And that's um, our state transition vector. Or state transition matrix, not a vector, of course. Um, and that allows us to take a state, uh, no, should be a hat. So that, that is, that it allows us to pick the state uh, xk by taking this uh, matrix and multiplying it with the previous state, like this. And similarly, we can also update the covariance matrix. Uh, using this approach. But due to the structure of the covariance matrix, we need to multiply it both with fk from the uh, left and uh, fk, um, what is fk transposed from the right. But this is our update rule. And to this rule, um, yeah, I need to to add a, a small drawing uh, down here. Um, should actually have inserted that earlier. But if we have our um, state space here, we have the velocity and we have the position, then let me use two different colors. If we have the current state here and we want to predict a, a new state, like this, then uh, for all points in the current state, we can multiply it with this uh, FK matrix and it will move us uh, to a location in, in the new uh, state. And that also applies for, for a point up here. So that was current um, XK minus one here and xk here. 
so this is how we can update uh, the, the position and the covariance matrix uh, follows and uh, it's all given by, by the two equations up here. So far so good. So now we have some rules for how to update our state vector given this uh, state transition matrix and our state description. Both state vector and covariance matrix are updated uh, using the, the equations here. Sometimes this is, or in, in most cases, is this not enough? We can have uh, different things that will uh, modify the, the state of the system. And uh, let's take a look at uh, what these can, can be. We have uh, what is known as external uh, influence. And that is if we know that something, something will modify the state of the system, then we can take that into account. So we have the, the structure from before. And then we add a, a new term here, um, which is named BK multiplied with a, a vector named UK. And UK is what is known as a control vector, and B is a control matrix. Like this. And the idea is if you know that you have asked the system to accelerate, for instance, then you can update the state with the expected acceleration. Uh, from from this part, um, so so there you have some kind of option of of modifying the system, uh, and it is not only determined by the the previous state of the system because external factors can come in and and modify it. We also have uh, external uh, uncertainties. Uh, <clears throat> and they have a, a bit different structure because uh, whereas the external influence modifies the state vector, the external uh, uncertainties modifies the covariance matrix. And from earlier we had it was fk times pk minus 1 times fk transposed. And the external um, uncertainties, sometimes also named process noise, is uh, described by a matrix named Q. That states something about how much increases our uh, uncertainty about the state estimate when we are making this uh, kind of prediction. And that's relevant if you, uh, for instance, uh, walk in, or standing in, in the current location and then you shut your eyes so you don't have this kind of, of update where you are. Then you can move a, a few steps around without walking into something because you know where you are and uh, how the, the surroundings look like. But as long as you, or the, the further time you are spending with your eyes shut, then you are missing some kind of, of sensor input to describe you exactly where you are. And this is where this process noise comes into it, because your uncertainty of where you are will just grow over time. And these things should also be, be taken into account here. So what we are, are up to now, is that we actually have uh, this uh, structure here. So we can make our prediction of, of a new state um, using uh, these two equations. So this is uh, the full uh, prediction. So 
So these two equations are, are the important uh, ones here. Like that. Okay, good. Um, so if we have an estimate of the system state, we're able to predict how it would evolve over time uh, by taking account into external factors and uh, this process noise that makes our uncertainty just grow over time. So far so good. We should also be able to deal with uh, sensor readings that tell us something about the system state and therefore hopefully will allow us to update it so it actually is closer to the real uh, system state. So let's look into to how uh, to, to do this. Um, so the topic is now that um, that we want somehow to, to map between our state space where we had an, an idea about where the, the system were to some kind of uh, measurement state or sensor space. So this will be whatever sensor 1 is reading and here we have uh, what sensor 2 is reading. And we have a mapping from this space to this space. It might look something like this or and again we have a point here is moved to, to a point up here just as we had when we should uh, update the state space. And this can of course be mapped by a new matrix that maps your state space to some kind of, of sensor reading. And that um, that mapping is uh, given by this uh, matrix named HK. So let's see if we have this uh, state space representation, how can we then predict what we expect the sensor will see? And this is given by this mu expected down here, and it's a vector, and it's given by multiplying this transformation matrix HK and multiply it with the current state estimate, like this. And as we can update the, the expected states, we can also calculate the expected uh, covariance of, of that measurement in more or less a similar way. So HK times the uncertainty or the covariance matrix times HK transposed, like this. So these are our expected uh, measurements given our current state and these should be combined with um, with some actual uh, sensor uh, readings. So here we have XK which is our CK which is our measurement vector and in addition to that we have our measurement covariance matrix. Like this. So now we have what we expect to see and what we actually have seen and they are both described using these uh, um, the same uh, description. So let's try to, to draw that. So now we have uh, our coordinate system in the, the sensor space. So we have sensor 1 and we have sensor 2 down here. And let's see if we can, can choose some, some proper colors. So the expected uh, sensor reading gives us uh, this um, 
distribution, whereas the actual sensor reading can give us some different kind of uh, distribution here. Yes, and this is our actual sensor reading. So now we have two uh, dis uh, distributions that describe what we expect to see and what we actually have seen, and they both um, include some kind of, of noise or uncertainty. And by combining these two, these are actually um, probability density functions, and we com can combine them by pointwise multiplication, so we calculate the value of the distribution um, from the actual sensor reading in this point and multiply it with the expected sensor reasoning in that point and then we get a new distribution. And if we then normalize that we'll end up with a new um, new uh, combined sensor reading in here which follows both of these uh, distributions. So we both have used our knowledge about the expected sensor reading and we also have used our knowledge about the actual sensor reading and this gives us this uh, updated uh, sensor uh, estimate. And to do that we need some, um, some calculations. Um, combined uh, sensor reading. distribution like this. So we can take these two and combine and, and get a, a new uh, distribution. So we need a bit of help here to, to be able to, to do that um, using uh, mathematics. And if I have um, two uh, Gaussian distributions, mu1 with covariance uh, sigma 1 and I want to combine that with uh, mu 2 um, well I will say mu 0 because that matches our, my notes uh, then okay how to update uh, these things so what will the new uh, mean or new state vector be and how will the new covariance matrix be given this? And to do that, we can compute what is known as the Kalman gain. This is this K, which is given by sigma zero multiplied with sigma zero plus sigma one. And then we need to take the inverse of that. And this is some kind of, of helper value. Uh, which allows us to write that the combined um, sensor reading or the combined uh, version of these two um, uh, distributions is given by uh, mu zero plus, and then we have the Kalman uh, gain here multiplied with the difference between the uh, the two uh, mean values of, of the distributions and similarly will our covariance matrix of the two distributions uh, of the combined distributions be uh, sigma 0 minus k times sigma 0. So if we are having things described in this term with a state vector and a covariance matrix then we can add them using these three equations down here. So far, so good. So this is actually what we are having because uh, we have an expected reading and the covariance of the expected reading. And similarly, we had the measured ve measurement vector and we had the covariance matrix of, of that uh, measured value. So now we need to, to combine these two things. Um, so let's see where this uh, takes us. So for for this, 
we can state that our mu zero is our mapping of our state vector xk hat multiplied with uh, hk and the covariance of that expected reading is given to be the state update matrix well no the our sensor reading matrix multiplied with the state covariance multiplied with hk t so this is what our current state looks like in the sensor space and we want to combine that with uh, our current sensor reading ck and our covariance matrix uh, related to that which is a matrix named rk so now we need to to combine all of these uh, things and see what comes out of that so to compute the the kalman gain we start with uh, sigma zero that's uh, the part up here so we have H K P K H K transpose multiplied with and then more or less the same and then plus sigma one which was this uh, R K and this Kalman gain describes how much to trust. Uh, the observations of the first state vector and the second state vector. So far, so good. Now, the calculated uh, mean is given by the, the state vector, or predicted into to the sensor reading, like this, and then plus our Kalman gain multiplied with and then the difference between these two, so um, our actual sensor readings, CK minus what we expected to see, HK, X hat, K, like this. And finally, we need to update our covariance matrix or to describe our uncertainty about this uh, system. And this is whatever we, we started out with. Like this, and then minus our Kalman gain multiplied with uh, the same thing here. I don't know why I added this uh, forensic start, but let's just uh, close it here. So far, so good. So now we have a new estimate of where our system is, and we can actually see if we can. Uh, interpret this in, in a proper way um, and this will be our expected or updated sensor reading inside our measurement space so let's call that x hat mark like case steps and we need to project that into the, the sensor space and similarly for the covariance matrix I need to build that up in uh, uh, from from behind uh, to to make it uh, fit in, in a suitable way. So what we are having right now is a way to combine our current uh, estimate of the system or estimated uh, sensor reading with the actual sensor reading and then get an update of our expected sensor reading with all of these uh, combined things. But we are still in the uh, in the sensor space and to go back to the original uh, space we should be able to remove this uh, HK part because that's in front of uh, all terms here uh, in, in this equation and similarly for the uh, covariance matrix in our state space we can get rid of this HK in front of all terms and HK uh, transpose at the end of all terms. So this is, no, sorry, not there. But there. So all the elements here underlined by a, a red or a green line 
can be uh, uh, removed and that leaves us, us with uh, the following uh, equation since that gives us the, the update step. So our updated state is given by our current state um, and some I just need to, to check something here. Let's see. That I'm having a missing something like a minus one or, or so. Well, no, because that was taken care of by, by the prediction step. Um, okay. So here we need this uh, hat and then plus. And our Kalman gain, we need to remove the, the first part here, so that would be pk times h k transpose multiplied with this part h k pk h k transpose plus r k. And then finally, we need to, to multiply. Um, with uh, our actual sense reading xk here minus um, hk and then our current uh, estimator of the system so far so good so this is how we update our state and then to update our covariance matrix we are doing uh, no, it shouldn't be an X, it should be a K. It should also be a K up here. That's an error. Sorry for that. Um, we take the original covariance matrix and then minus, and then we need to have the, um, the Kalman gain, which was this part. And then uh, we should multiply it with... Uh, this uh, down here, which was HK and PK, like that. So it looks like more or less a, a mess of matrices that are multiplied together in in a, a certain uh, structure, which it also is. And you now you have seen how the structure has been uh, generated. And I hope this gives you an idea of how the mathematics behind the Kalman filter is uh, working. And this works fine for all linear uh, systems that can be uh, described um, using the, the update step. And the final thing we, we need to, to go back to here is when actually using the, the Kalman filter, you first run a predict step and then you have an update. And to, to get an overview, of, to do the actual prediction, we should go back and see, okay, how do we get from our x k minus 1 state to our current state? So that's the prediction step. And the update step is then to, um, to take this uh, updated uh, position here, combine it with our center reading, and then um, yeah, I'm not being too uh, specific uh, here. Uh, to combine these two and then give us an updated uh, estimate of the system, and then we can go back and use that for prediction and continue that as as much as as we want. In practice, you are allowed to do multiple prediction steps, uh, one by each other, because you're just updating the system. If you uh, don't have any um, measurement updates, then that's fine to do. Um, you're also allowed to do multiple update steps at once if, if that's needed. Um, and that could be the case if you have uh, different sensor readings that you actually uh, 
want to combine. That could be one from the DPS and one from the accelerometer. And then you go through this uh, loop uh, multiple times. Okay, I hope this uh, gave you an overview of the Kalman filter and the derivation uh, of it.